there have been movements and organization taking place for months now, probably more than a year to get people ready to immediately take to the streets if Donald Trump fires special prosecutor Robert Mueller. Now that The New York Times has reported that Deputy A.G. Rod Rosenstein supposedly considered secretly reporting Trump and using the 25th Amendment to remove Trump from office, and indeed we learned just an hour ago that Deputy A.G. Rod Rosenstein is leaving. He's either resigning, has been forced to resign, or has been fired. You probably will know by the time you watch this, even though we don't yet know right now. It is time for the activation of the more than 400,000 Americans in more than 900 cities who have already signed up to take to the streets in protest, if indeed the next level of interference with the Trump administration, uh, with the Trump Russia uh, investigation uh, takes place. And remember, I said earlier that the story about Rosenstein in the New York Times could well be true and also its timing or leak could have been orchestrated by the right in order to create a pretext for Rod Rosenstein to leave his position, which is exactly what has happened. Whatever the real number of people is who are ready to take to the streets in protest, it could be 400,000, maybe it's 4 million. I mean, not everybody who's going to protest says, I'm gonna sign up online to protest, right? I have been saying for a long time that signing petitions and calling your elected officials is fine. I encourage it. But when it gets real the way it's getting right now, it's going to take more than change.org petitions to change this, to change things and to change what's going on. And not only protesting will be necessary, civil disobedience is going to be necessary. Even the possibility of general strikes are going to be necessary. I want to be clear for me. Civil disobedience doesn't mean violent protest. I am not calling for violence. There are some who say civil disobedience includes more violent acts. I'm not saying that. I am saying civil disobedience as a collective concerted effort of citizens to not obey certain laws or demands or orders or commands from the institution of power, whether it's a government or a military. In our case, in the United States, it's a government. General strikes are when workers in many industries in most industries, in all industries, will say we are not working in order to bring the economy or an industry to a halt in protest until our grievances are addressed. Now, here's what you have to understand. And I know that there are people in the audience who get this because they write to me about it. By design, the vulture capitalism that we have in the United States is set up to prevent civil disobedience and general strikes. The way it works is as follows. Employees have almost no power. They need to work to have health care because of the system that we have. Wages have been stagnant in real terms for 40 years. 40% of Americans, I think, can't cover a $400 emergency or some crazy number. We did a story about that. Don't remember the exact numbers. So basically, you have a situation where no one can afford to strike or to do civil disobedience and risk missing days at work if you have a job. And that is what is missing from people who are furious with immigrants for taking their jobs, right? Employers and corporations and lobbyists, they've set up a system that's brilliant for them, right? They own you and then you get mad at people who are just looking for work instead of getting mad at the uh, sources of power that have actually put this system in place. So I know that people are going to write to me and say, David, it's a position of privilege to be able to strike from your job or to do civil disobedience. That's why people go to the women's march for two hours and then you get back to your life and you go back to your job the next day. That's why the women's march was on a weekend and things continue. So I get it. I understand that the system is designed to make it really inconvenient and difficult for people to actually get out there and protest and to do civil disobedience and to organize general strikes. I'm merely saying to you, especially with the departure of Rod Rosenstein now and what, as Pat said in the last story, is probably going to be a relatively muted reaction from the public. It's going to take more to really change things. And the forces of power, the forces in power are organized so that you opt just to stay home and look at social media and watch reality shows and just go to work the next day because you can't afford to do anything else. I don't have the answer. This is a very complicated situation, but I think we knew from the beginning that if it really came to a head, 
if the interference in the Trump Russia investigation really escalated, it wasn't ever obvious that there would be the level of unrest and reaction and anger that would be necessary to prevent Trump from successfully interfering. I hope I'm wrong, Pat. I hope I'm wrong. And I hope that this really does trigger significant protests. And we say this simply cannot happen. We are going to bring the economy to a halt until our grievances are addressed here, because this is simply not fair. But the system's designed for that not to happen. Well, hey, I'm going to take to the streets right now, engage in some civil disobedience. Yeah. Consequences be damned. We're, there will be no show for the next month because Pat is going to be leaving to engage in civil disobedience and, and participating in a general strike. I want to hear from you about this, okay? I hope that you're following the show on Instagram at David Pakman Show. I hope that you're following me on Instagram at david.pakman because we want to hear from you about this issue and about what you think should happen. Quick break back after this. Today's program is sponsored in part by Zip Recruiter. There are job sites that send you tons of the wrong resumes to sort through or make you wait for the right candidates to apply to your job. That is not smart. But what is smart is going to ziprecruiter.com slash Pacman to hire the right person because Zip Recruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you. It finds them for you. It's powerful matching technology, scans thousands of resumes, identifies people with the right skills, education and experience for your job and actively invites them to apply. So you end up with qualified candidates quickly. No more sorting through the wrong resumes, no more waiting for the right candidates to apply. And that's why ZipRecruiter is rated number one by employers in the U.S. from hiring sites on Trustpilot with over a thousand reviews. And right now, our viewers and listeners can try ZipRecruiter for free by going to ZipRecruiter.com slash Pacman. That is ZipRecruiter.com forward slash P-A-K-M-A-N. One more time, ZipRecruiter.com slash Pacman to try it for free.